Doug McKnight here at Hatch Finders Fly Shop in Livingston, Montana. Next fly I'm going to tie for you guys is uh, a crab pattern I came up with uh, a couple of years ago uh, called the ER crab. Um, first I'm going to take a size 4, um, just standard dimension saltwater hook and tie this thing from you know as big as a 1-0 um, down to a size 8. Um, thread we're using is just some uh, UTC 140 in chartreuse. And the first thing we're going to do is install a set of lead dumbbell eyes. Pretty close to the eye of the hook. A couple of figure eights to get it in position. And then a little bit of zap a gap. And some more thread to really make sure it doesn't spin. And before that glue dries, just give it a look. Make sure it's perpendicular. You don't want it cockeyed or anything. Um, next, we're going to take some, some light tan marabou and just clip a little section, maybe the tip. Uh, you know, maybe about an inch and a half long. Wind my thread back to between the point and the barb. And you want that marabou to be maybe slightly bigger than a hook shank length. And I usually just wrap the excess all the way back and forth. Take a little bit of tan UV crystal flash, maybe about four or five strands of it. Tie that in just above the marabou and trim it to length. All right, next we're going to take this is some bleach grizzly neck hackles. A good salt water cape. Just pick out two of those and tie those in on the sides of the shank even with the end of the marabou. Okay. Next, got just some natural colored rubber legs, and I cut, probably cut a maybe a two inch strip of it. And I went in with a brown Sharpie marker and put some stripes in there. And then the very ends did red, almost like a merkin crab. I'm going to tear apart three sets of legs. And we're going to tie those in. Tie the first one just right, right by the tail. And just a single figure eight pulled tight is good enough. We're going to go back in and glue them. Move your thread down, put in another set. And the last set, kind of right close to those dumbbell eyes. All right, and then just move your thread up to in front of the lead eyes. Um, a lot of times I'll tie this fly with a weed guard and this is where you'd put it in. Um, I'm not going to tie in a weed guard uh, this time. I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish it. And finish off that thread head with a little bit of zap-a-gap. 
Right, the tying portion of this fly is now done, and we are going to uh, glue in a nice little crab body. So what I've got here is just some cream furry foam. I tie this in a bunch of different colors. This light cream color is great for a real light sand bottom, um, but do also do this in tan, olive, brown, um, and you can just match the bottom. I, I like having a bunch of different colors with me depending on where you're fishing. Just try and match the bottom um, and make it look like it blends in. So what I'm going to do, you can tear this furry foam apart so you have two different pieces of it. Once you get it started, it comes apart pretty easily. And so I'm just going to place those two pieces that I just tore apart right back together again. And then I'm going to cut kind of a rectangle shape or a square shape um, about as long as the hook shank. Just into a nice, almost rectangle shape like that. And then just using your thumbnail as a guide, just kind of round those corners. Do that to both sides. Just into a nice kind of oval shape. Just like that. And then usually take these apart again. Just like that. Next, we're going to take some Zap Goo. This takes the place of epoxy, um, which dries hard. This stuff remains flexible. Um, so there's not really much of a chance, if you do hook a permit, um, that that hard epoxy body will break away and block the gap of the hook. Um, this fly, the body remains flexible and almost rubbery. And that won't happen with this one. But you'll get a fairly rigid body. So just spread that zap goo around a little bit. I usually go on top of the lead eyes just a little bit. Make sure you got good coverage all over the hook shank. And then I usually flip the crab upside down like that and take one of the pieces of your furry foam and just lay it right on top and give it a little bit of pressure and that zoop, zap goo will stick immediately. It's almost like contact cement. Now here I might spread out those legs a little bit just like that kind of your last opportunity to trim that crab body. So if there's something you don't like about it, you know, give it a little bit of trim. And then the other one goes right on top. And I usually kind of press the center of the crab first and then just start squeezing it. And that glue, the zap goo, will kind of migrate from the hook shank out to the edges of this crab body. And if you use enough zap goo, you should start seeing some of it kind of run out from the crab body, and that's what you want. And lastly, um, I'm going to take a brown Sharpie marker, a fine point one, and just put some dots with a permanent marker on top there, give that shell a little bit of a mottled look. And uh, maybe let that guy lie on a flat surface for uh, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, and you'll, it'll, it'll be totally dry. And you got yourself a nice crab to uh, throw to bonefish, permit, redfish. Um, anything that eats a crab would be definitely interested in this guy.